Hello there, friends. So, uh, today, I would like to show you how I've installed a Pop! OS VM onto Windows Subsystem for Linux for Microsoft Windows 11. Uh, this can work with Microsoft Windows Home Edition. One does need to already have installed the ability to bring up Linux pro GUI programs on Windows. So that is left as an exercise for some other video or just simply looking up Microsoft's documentation for your particular platform. So, for example, I have been able to bring up a GUI, as you can see, coming in from the right. Now, What we would like to do is install these various utilities of Linux on the Ubuntu WSL. Uh, I commented it out because I had already done all those things, but it's that basic sudo apt install QEMU QEMU-KVM libvert libvert Damien system bridge utils vert manager and x11 apps I don't think all of these are necessary for what I am de demonstrating at the moment I think that uh, that uh, I could have avoided potentially the entire daemon thing. I don't know whether I could have avoided Bridge Utils, Vert Manager, and, and maybe some other things. Um, I simplified the running of that command from the, the reference that one sees right here. Yeah. So, that reference one can see right here, and if one chooses, one can definitely go to that URL of YouTube and uh, watch that video. Now, one of the things that needs to be done in order to install an operating system such as Pop! OS is to actually go to the website, right? to download that ISO. So, that ISO can just be gotten right here. And now, you have this download button. One can press that and do download. There's not much reason for me to do that since I've already done that. And then one can also check the shasa. So one can save this shasam. Let me try to show it. Oop. To you by moving that on up, maybe. <laughs> there you go. So then, once one saves that, one can run an echo command with some more shelling out that Bash can do for us. 
the gel can do the same type of thing for us. And it's going to calculate the Shaw 256 sum and also give us what the uh, Shaw sum is that I saved to pop a 256 Shaw sum dot text. Now, um, the reason why we check our Sha sums is that we want to make sure that the file we thought we were downloading is the file we indeed got. It's a statistical method that two files that differ are rarely having the same Sha sum. What you can actually see me doing right now is asking that the stream editor said replaces all of the spaces with new line characters so that that all may be piped to the sort uniquely command. By doing that, I can validate that there is only one occurrence of something that looks like a shasam. Therefore, I know that the shasam of the ISO file and the shasam I was expecting are the same value without trying to eyeball it for like a minute and a half and also getting that wrong. Now, I've already created the, the previous version of the file, so I want to remove it because I forgot to remove it the last time I tried to record. <laughs> Alrighty, so there I go, removing it. Now, what I'm doing here is I am using the emulator uh, to create a file on disk that virtual machines using that emulator are able to treat that as if it is a uh, hard disk or a solid state disk. And this is very quick. And the reason why it's very quick is that if we look at the disk use, It's only 196k. Now I've actually asked it to allow me to have 150 gigabytes possible uh, for the uh, for the virtual machine. When the virtual machine starts making more demands for storage, it will grow. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm taking a command that will request four CPU cores, which is the symmetric multiprocessing. We'll mount the ISO file of the operating system as a CD-ROM parameter, we'll treat the demo file I just created as a hard disk in slot A and ask for five gigabytes of RAM and use a standard uh, uh, VGA as, as it's called by QEMU and we'll also use the accelerator uh, KVM. I used uh, the default accelerator the very first time I did this and KVM is a fair amount faster, it seems. Uh, and, uh, and that makes sense because the standard one, which I think is either TCG or TC, I think it's TCG. Uh, the standard one 
uh, does a bit more emulation than what I think the uh, KVM, which I think stands for Kernel Virtual Machine, uh, does. Now, I will be pausing the recording while I type in my own password. Now we can see that the virtual machine is starting up and it does see that there is a DVD or CD-ROM virtually loaded into that, uh, into that virtual machine. I'm going to pause for a bit because why not? Now the, uh, the textual base portion of the boot process has uh, led way to the graphical user interface trying to start up. And now we have the installation screen for Pop! OS starting on up. In my case, I do like pretty much most of the defaults. So, in this case, English is my preferred language for using a computer. The United States is fine. English keyboard. Uh, default layout. Clean install and selecting the virtual disk. Erase and install. Now, in my case here, I'm going to pause while I put in my username and password. Now I did skip two screens in this recording uh, since uh, me typing in my my name and my password are things I think anybody can can emulate for their own names and their own passwords uh, and then if we turn off the encryption and then we actually say don't encrypt by default pop os does encrypt it will have some effect on the speed of your virtual machine i would anticipate and you can encrypt it it probably is fine but in my case on this particular volume i don't desire to encrypt so don't encrypt and now you can see that pop os is going to give us some nice screens and there and the system is doing the type of installation that operating systems do do When I was doing this the first time, I was even able to install uh, programs that I wanted right now. Uh, at the moment, I don't want to install anything, but I was able to do previously a sudo app install htop. I actually just installed, I just actually uh, here uh, started running top so I could show that we have some, that I have some RAM here for the machine, things are running, and then if we do this here, cat rock cpu info, we have lots of information about our virtualized CPU, QEMU, Q, QEMU virtual CPU version has overlaid our 
or my uh, actual authentic AMD. And, uh, and then if I do a grab processor, you can you can see that I have four processors, but you know, why ever believe that uh, we can count well until we run WC for word count. So, we probably are getting pretty close to having it installed. as close as I thought, I suppose. Well, for the moment now, I will pause. That way you don't have to just watch a scroll bar and I don't have to just keep on talking. So my friends, we've now come to the end of the initial installation. There are options. Restart device or shutdown. I'm going to select shutdown so that I can change the command line of starting up to not have the installation CD uh, mounted. So now what I can do is go on up and take this away. And now, let's see. Why don't I change something? I'm going to live dangerously. Uh, maybe not. Since I only have six cores and six threads on this particular computer, I am not going to increase the symmetric multiprocessor count, but I'm just going to leave that as is, and I am going to start our start the virtual machine of mine. This time, it seems that we're not seeing any um, we're not seeing any uh, boot text, and now pretty soon, pretty soon. I should have a username. Yes, and I indeed have a username. So click. And then I need to enter my password and press enter. I just pressed enter and now the pop OS is being entered into and it comes up with some nice nice different things that I can choose since on the QEMU using Microsoft Windows uh, the super key also known as the Windows key uh, doesn't actually have as much effect. I'm going to keep the dock always down there because the virtual machine doesn't capture pressing that key, whereas the host operating system Microsoft Windows does. And 
and so it never, so the virtual machine never gets that Windows key. So it takes away some of the user experience of Pop OS. Uh, I have not tried out gestures on the virtual machine yet. And let's see, System76, dark theme. I do like the dark theme. And location services. Nobody needs to know where I am, right? <laughs> And social media. Who wants that? So here we are. We now have a Pop OS. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So settings. displays and for HD apply keep the changes move the window a little bit so let's see now I'm very curious uh, ooh, ooh, don't know what just happened but I think Windows, Microsoft Windows, took the gestures that I was intending for Pop OS. So, I uh, guess that answers my question about that type of thing. But, you know, hey, now we have a Pop OS, or I have a Pop OS, I should say, and I can do all the sorts of things that Pop OS uh, can do including browsing the web although I have not yet seen any possibility of using sound but that's okay it actually comes up as dummy output for sound and nothing at all but let's go to a website so that we show that our computer, our virtual machine, or my virtual machine, I should say, uh, actually can go to a website. And the ubiquitous example domain. I have heard that one can access the host computer by going to that IP address. So it may be an interesting exercise to try that out. But what this gives, gives, gives us or demonstrates to us is that we can have our cake and eat it too with QEMU and being able to you know run any type of Linux program well maybe not any type but enough a fair number of them and be able to use the user interfaces of those. You can see I'm opening up Library Office and just doing a Hello World document. And apparently I typed too fast for it. <laughs> but when I say too fast, I didn't know that they would come up with a tooltip. <laughs> or it would come up with a tooltip. Uh, so, uh, Thank you for uh, listening to how to set up a virtual machine in a virtual machine using Microsoft Windows Home Edition or potentially, and I do not know this, Professional Edition. 
your mileage may vary. Some things will work and some things will stop working. And that's how it is. But you have a great day.